Hey Eloa, so this is um, a video for a little project that we said we're going to do together where we use a prompt and both share some thoughts on it in a video. And I'm absolutely terrified um, that I'm not going to be as pretty or as... because it's a visual medium. <laughs> That I'm not going to be as pretty or as insightful or as wise as you. Um, and I'm just trying to remind myself that you're probably having all the same stuff going on in your head as you make your video. I don't hope that you're suffering with it, but I just, you know, I'm just going to hold on to the fact that this is going to be difficult for both of us. Because we're putting ourselves out there, you know, in quite a, a big way when we're doing this. Um, and the prompt that we're using... Now I've given you the line, a line from a poem by Richard Sykin, and it goes, everybody needs a place, it shouldn't be inside of someone else. And I've given you a Sarah Kay poem called The Type as well, which was based on that line. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to concentrate on that Richard Sykin line because I've watched The Type about six times now and there's just so much stuff in it that I don't think I can, I think the video will be about an hour long. So I'm going to stick to the Richard Sykin line. Everybody needs a place. Um, what I will kind of take from the Sarah Kay poem is she talks about how every... She talks about how every woman can build their own place and they don't need to rely on anybody else to build their place. And that's really big stuff for me at the moment. Um, I have been single for a really long time. <laughs> And um, I think you go through like a few phases when you've been single for a really long time. And the first phase is everybody hates me and I'm disgusting and I'm unlovable and no one's ever going to want to go out with me and blah, 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 blah. And um, there is a return to phase one periodically. Um, but that kind of, the first six months you're going, my God, nobody fancies me in the world. And then the next phase is I'm just not ready to be in a relationship. I'm just, I just really need to spend some time with myself and I'm just going to grow as a person and I'm going to use this time to be a better girlfriend to the next person I meet. And you see it all as like a personal development journey. And, um, and you act like it's a total choice when you've actually spent six months going, no one fancies me, no one fancies me. Um, and my foot is really numb right now. So I'm going to have to slowly move the camera and slowly like edge my foot into a position where it's not asleep. Um, ah! Okay, that's slightly better. <laughs> um, and I do a really weird little fake laugh when I'm nervous. Um, yeah. And so after phase two, I'm sort of headed in, I'm, in, I'm into my third phase of singledom now, which is that, um, which is that my hair does never, never ever does what I want it to do, which is that, um, I'm really aware of that little chunk there, which is that, I am, I've done the personal development stuff and I am happy and I am building my own place and I'm kind of almost resentful about the idea of someone coming into my place and I'm really protective about my place and I'm like, I'm going to get six cats and never go on a date again and it's going to be fine. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's my three phases of singledom. Um, and I've been in the third phase and I, and, and phase one returns periodically and you start going, oh my God, it's just cause I'm really ugly and it's just cause no one likes me. And then I think, well, no, it's not because, you know, Margaret Thatcher got married. So, <laughs> which I hang on to in times of crisis. <laughs> and I just admitted it on YouTube. Ah. Um, so everybody needs a place. And I did a really hilarious Freudian slip when I typed it to you and I said everybody has a place but what's really interesting to me is is the second part of the quote that don't make that place inside somebody else and that really spoke to me because I think you know like any woman over the age of about 17 I've done that I've made my place inside of somebody else several times you know and um 
what makes this super awkward is I'm, I'm fairly certain at least one of those somebody else's is going to watch this video. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, so what happens when you make your place inside somebody else? Why is that bad? And why do we do it? I did it because I didn't know that I had a place. I didn't know that I was a human being in my own right. I didn't know that I was 100%. I always felt like I was 50%. That I needed somebody else to become whole. If you've seen um, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, um, it talks about, I think it's, oh, it's either Homer or Plato. Um, tells a story about originally human beings had four legs and four arms and two faces and the gods were so angry that we were so happy that they split us in half and we spend our lives looking for our other half um, and the reason that we constantly feel like we're not quite complete is because we're not and um my favourite part of this story, which actually isn't in Hedwig and the Angry Inch, is that orgasms were the gift the gods gave us to stop us all killing ourselves out of despair. Um, because it's only at that point of orgasm that you feel that completion again. And you feel that I'm a whole person because you're in total union with someone else. I don't know how I feel about that. As with a lot of things the ancient Greeks said, I'm not sure how I, I'm not sure if I believe it. I think it's a really tempting idea. And I think it's one that I kind of, I'd never heard the story when I was 15, 16, but I kind of grabbed onto this idea that one day I'll find the one. I'll find Mr. Right. And I'll stop worrying about the way I look and I'll stop worrying about if I'm a lesbian because men can cure that, you know. Um, and I'll stop worrying about if I'm enough because somebody will stand up in a room full of the people we love the most and tell them, that I am enough and that they have chosen me. Because God, isn't that, isn't, that just, isn't that just powerful? That somebody stands up in a room and says, that, her, I want her. And that's what I fall for every time. Less so now because I've, ch I've stood up in a room and chosen myself. And I want to be with me till the day I die. And everybody else is kind of going to have to come after that, I'm afraid. Um, oh, that's really... I'm, I'm amazed that I've just said that. And I actually believe it on some level as well. Mm. And... So what do I do? Walking around feeling like 50% of a person and I meet someone who feels like they could be the other 50%. And I'm really stressed out and they're really laid back. And I'm not that funny and they're really funny and I'm a bit geeky and they're really cool and I'm not very attractive and they're very handsome and I think oh my god finally I found my other half and they complete me except after about three weeks we absolutely want to kill each other because I become an absolute slave to their existence and I become a slave to their approval And if they don't like me, I don't like me. And because I'm quite... And because usually when I'm doing this, I'm fairly codependent and annoying. They don't like me all that often. And, um, and I expect them to know all my needs and fulfil them. But if I have to tell them what my needs are, they have fundamentally failed. They have to read my mind and do what I want. And they have to be my boyfriend, my best friend, my nursemaid, my therapist and my god and if they're missing one of them they're fucking doing it wrong, pardon my French and that is a recipe for the most dysfunctional relationships you will ever be in in your life, I should know I've done them um, and to be honest I'm sure that loads of women would watch this and go yep yeah, yep yeah, been there been there or like oh crap that's where I am right now because it's quite common because we're sold this idea that women aren't enough. We're sold this idea that people on their own aren't enough. And I think one of the most liberating experiences I've ever had is when I took this moment and I said, actually, Alison, just you in and of yourself, 
you are enough. And your place is right where you are. And I can build a place wherever I am. And I don't need another person. And sadly for me, that had to come through pain. That had to come through being kind of left alone. Not of my choice. (laughs) Is the most diplomatic way I can put it. Um, And and so I I went through phase one. I did six months of I'm disgusting and no one's ever going to love me. And... (sighs) And then I did phase two, which is I'm going to go on a really beautiful journey with myself and it's going to be like eat, pray, love and it's going to be fantastic. And um, and if anybody asks, it's just a choice I'm making because it's best for me. And in my experience, that phase doesn't actually involve any personal development of any sort. It just involves telling all your friends that you're going to personally develop as a result of being single for a really long time. And it's phase three that's the really, that's the part where you fall in love with yourself so deeply which I do do quite often. I do just look at myself and go, my God, I'm so lucky that I get to spend my life with this girl. (laughs) And I choose her and I choose me. Because quite often I do, I choose to make my place inside my body, inside my brain. Wow. And I don't say that often enough. I don't affirm that often enough. And maybe I wouldn't have if we hadn't agreed to do this project. So everybody needs a place. Just make sure it isn't inside somebody else. The best way of doing that is to make sure it's inside you. For me. It's what I do. I make me my place. And that has downsides. And the downside is that you can be a bit cold and a bit cut off and a bit, I don't need no man. And a bit, it's hard when you're so intent on not making anybody else that place. Sometimes it's hard to even just go to someone and say, I need a cuddle or I need you to tell me that I'm okay. Cause I don't remember the truth about myself right now, which is that I'm always okay. Um, And I get, something that happens for me is I get so intent on being my own soft place to land that I forget that I have so many other people who, you know, who aren't romantically involved with me, who are my friends, who are really good friends, who will always remind me about the truth, who will always remind me of the truth about myself, which is another reason I love doing this little project with you. Because it reminds me that I'm being captain of my own destiny and doing something that I want to do but also letting someone else in yeah so that's that's I've done 13 minutes now so I'm gonna have to bloody stop because I talk for England but I love you and I hope you enjoy and I'm really looking forward to seeing yours